Ivy and Bean, Book 1, Chapter 7. Your job today is to check for understanding, part of comprehension. So as you're listening to this story, be thinking about number one, who is this chapter about? And number two, what is this chapter about? Let's get started. Chapter seven, easy peasy. Now they were ready to begin. Ivy went to the bedroom section of her room and pulled out a cardboard box from under her bed. Then she looked at Bean. This part is really secret, she said. I promise I won't tell anybody, said Bean. Ivy opened the box and took out the square thing wrapped in a pink silky cloth. It was her spell book. Bean thought that a spell book would be mysterious looking with a magic sign on the cover or something, but this spell book was just plain black. It was old, though. Ivy said it was almost a hundred years old. The pages were yellowish. Where did you get it? Bean whispered. My aunt gave it to me, Ivy said. Is she one? asked Bean. She says she isn't, said Ivy, but I'm not so sure. Ivy flipped through the book for the dancing spell. She read it to herself, and then she whispered it, but so low that Bean couldn't hear. Bean didn't mind. Everyone knew that witches' spells were private. After a few minutes, Ivy said, Got it. It's a pretty easy spell. The only thing is, we need worms. Well, luckily, there were lots of worms in Bean's backyard. Tons. But now they were going to have to sneak into Bean's yard and dig them up without Nancy seeing. But also, luckily, Bean knew how to get into her yard by going through the other backyards on Pancake Court. There was one really gross dog poopy yard, and then there was Mrs. Trance, who didn't like kids in her garden, and there was a lot of climbing, but aside from that, Bean said, it was easy peasy. Ivy put the big black book in her backpack. Bean tucked the wand into her back pocket. It was still a little drippy, but there was nothing Bean could do about that now. Carefully, they tiptoed down the stairs. Ivy's mother was still working in her office, and they slipped past her door like quiet ants. Soon they were moving quickly toward the back fence. Ivy, Bean saw, did not really know how to climb a fence. She just jumped at it, hoping that she would get up to the top. So Bean showed her how to find the little holes in the bumps that made the ladder part of it. When they got to the top, Bean whispered, this is Ruby Trevor's house. Let's go back for a minute, boys and girls. If we're going to be looking at this map, you have to figure out where they're starting and where they're going. Can't quite see where they're starting. You'll figure it out as we go. The good, oh wait, no, wait a minute. Um, when we got to the top, Bean whispered, this is Ruby and Trevor's house. They have a good sandbox. The good news was that there was a gate on either side of Ruby and Trevor's yard. The bad news was that it led to the really gross dog poopy yard. Bean and Ivy walked on tiptoes, but still Ivy stepped in some. Fester, the dog whose poop it was, came out and sniffed them. He was a nice dog, and he seemed sorry that his yard was so disgusting. The next fence was low and easy, except the wand fell out of Bean's pocket, and she had to go back and get it. Then came Jake, the teenager's house. There was loud music with lots of bad words coming from that garage. There was no way Jake, the teenager, was ever going to hear them walking through his backyard. Mrs. Trance was next. Getting into her yard was no problem. Ivy and Bean climbed over the stone wall, dropped down into her lawn. Everything in Mrs. Trance's yard was perfectly neat. Her tulips were lined up in rows. Her apple tree was tied so that its branches grew flat. Her bird bath had no birds in it. 
If Mrs. Tramp sees us, she's going to be really mad, said Bean. Bean knew this garden. It was very long, and there was no way around it. Is she going to, like, throw rocks at us, said Ivy. She looked a little scared. No, she just talks. But that's worse than throwing rocks, Bean sighed. Ugh, maybe she's not home. But Mrs. Trance was home. They were halfway across that perfect yard when she came out, and she stood on her patio, and she glared at them. Bernice, she said in her high voice, come here. Bean took a few steps towards the patio. Closer, Bernice, it seems like we have to have another one of our little talks. Ivy came and stood beside Bean next to the patio. Who are you? Mrs. Trance frowned, looking at Ivy's white witch face. My name is Ivy, said Ivy. Well, Ivy, children are not allowed in my garden. Maybe you can teach your friend Bernice that. Mrs. Trance gave a short, dry laugh. <laughs> because Bernice does not seem to be able to remember it by herself, do you, Bernice? I do remember, Miss Trance, but it's just kind of a sort of an emergency, said Bean. I'm sorry. Now, usually when you say you're sorry, people say something nice back to you, but not Mrs. Trance. She said, I don't think you're sorry, Bernice. If you were sorry, you wouldn't keep coming into my garden when I have asked you not to. Do I need to call your mother again? She smiled a very unfriendly way. Bean heard Ivy sucking in her breath. <gasps> she was about to do something, thought Bean. Uh, uh, I'm going to throw up, Ivy said loudly. Yuck, thought Bean, whirling around to see. Ivy looked at her and one crossed one eye a tiny bit. Bean looked closely at Ivy and then she said, that's the emergency I was telling you about, Mrs. Trance. <gasps> Mrs. Trance looked worried. Ivy burped. Ooh, it sounded horrible. Mrs. Trance jumped back. Oh, go, 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 go. Go home. Run, run, run. That's what we're trying to do, Mrs. Trance, Bean said sweetly. She was having a good time watching Mrs. Trance face. Oh, just go now, yelled Mrs. Trance, and Ivy started gagging. Well, well. Mrs. Trance ran inside her house and looked at them through the window, and she waggled her hand to shoo them away. We'll be going now, Mrs. Trance, called Bean. She waved goodbye as if she and Ivy, as she and Ivy walked away. Ivy gave one more disgusting burp, just for fun, and Bean tried to hold her laughs in, but they came out of her nose. And then Ivy couldn't hold her laugh in either, and it was a good thing that they were in the next yard by then. It really was easy peasy after that. They went across Kalia's yard, and Kalia was in her high chair at the kitchen window. She waved her spoon at Bean, and Bean waved back and then put her finger up to her lips. Shh, she whispered, and finally they came to Bean's own backyard. All right, boys and girls, your job was to think about who is in this chapter and what this chapter was about. You can go and do your assignment now. Good job, boys and girls.